Welcome back, everyone. Some great stories to go over today. First off, we're going to jump into breaking news. The CCP virus outbreak in China is continuing, and questions are being raised on the whereabouts of seven of the top members of the Chinese Communist Party. Also, heavy rains are continuing along the Yangtze River in China, and many of these downstream reservoirs are overflowing. Also, the U.S. State Department has designated four major Chinese state-run media outlets as foreign missions of the Chinese Communist Party. And in the United States, protesters are trying to set up a new, quote, black house. Now, some of the broader stories will be going over today. The Chinese Communist Party is beginning to censor news of the floods in China, and the censorship is coming as damage is increasing. Also, the Chinese soldiers who killed these 20 Indian soldiers on, dis on the disputed border between India and China were allegedly, quote, new faces to the area. Also, the Chinese Communist Party has issued an alert stating there is no epidemic in Beijing's 301 military hospital, and that is now raising concerns among netizens that there is, in fact, an epidemic at that hospital. We'll be going over these stories and more. Now, before we jump into it, folks, this channel is being censored on YouTube. A lot of our advertisers are being restricted. And so we've recently launched a Patreon. If you can, please check it out in the link below. And also every Sunday we'll be doing a live Q&A for our Patreon supporters. Now let's, let's jump into the news. So first off, the Chinese Communist Party is now censoring news about these floods in China. Again, this is taking place as the damage to the local areas are increasing and also amid local concerns over the integrity of the Three Gorges Dam. Now, first off, the economic loss currently is about $3.4 billion, and that's according to the CCP, so take it for what it's worth. More than 213,000 people have already needed emergency rescue, 9,300 homes collapsed, and 171,000 homes damaged. And these are just the numbers we can get out. And there are also concerns that flooding could get worse as the flooding is impacting 980 reservoirs that are in the middle and lower reaches of the Yangtze River. Now, a few points on this. First off, 11.2 million people hit by heavy rains in 26 provinces. Now, local news is saying 300 reservoirs in Anhui have exceeded the flood control limit, and many villages in Luan City were flooded. And in just that area, 9,500 people were evacuated. And also, Radio Free Asia is now reporting that the Chinese Communist Party is now censoring information on this flood. News on the flood has been deemed, quote, sensitive information by the Chinese Communist Party. Also, Taiwanese news is reporting, quote, expert warns China's Three Gorges Dam is in danger of collapse. Now, a prominent Chinese hydrologist, Wang Wei Lo, is warning that the Three Gorges Dam could collapse at any moment. Here's a quote from that article. Wang pointed out that the dam's design, construction, and quality inspection were all carried out by the same group of people and that the project was finished too quickly. He said that even Chinese Vice Minister of Water Resources, Ye Yan Chun, confessed at a June 10th press conference that water levels of at least 148 rivers in the country have risen above warning thresholds, which proves, he says, that the Three Gorges Dam has a limited effect on flood control. In addition to this, Epoch Times has been doing some exclusive interviews on the ground, Again, we're blacklisted in mainland China, but we can do phone interviews. We also have a lot of sources in China. Now, according to Huang Yang, who grew up by the Zaodu River, said that many local people have never seen such a large amount of water in their entire lifetimes. Now, a big update on this conflict between India and China. They're saying now that these soldiers who carried out the violence on these Indian soldiers were new faces to this region. Jumping into a report from Hong Kong Epoch Times, it says many Chinese soldiers in the bloody conflict between China and India are new faces. And it says, quote, when they arrived at the Chinese camps, notably these Indian soldiers saw the Chinese had set up a new camp, they went to investigate. The first thing the Indian side noticed was that the Chinese army did not seem to be a familiar face. They were not soldiers usually deployed in the area. And Indian reports are saying that the 16th Infantry's battalion assessment of the conflict was that the Chinese army involved in the fighting was not a conventional force deployed on the front line of the actual control line, and it did not belong to China's previous participation in multiple rounds of talks. Now this is raising some speculation on who these soldiers were, 
why they were deployed to that actual area, and why they were not seen before. Now, a bit of broader context to this. Remember that reports recently came out saying the Chinese Communist Party gave the kill orders, that the Chinese Communist Party ordered this to take place. Now, Indian media are discussing this right now, and this, taken into context that these are new faces, is raising further speculation of pre-planning for this violence by the Chinese Communist Party. Now, we'll have to see what other information comes out on this. Moving on to some news in Beijing, the Chinese Communist Party has issued this alert saying there's no epidemic in Beijing's 301 military hospital. And the fact that they issued that alert is making many, many netizens concerned that there is, in fact, an epidemic at that hospital. Now, reports from Taiwan are stating, quote, the official microblog of the Haidan district government in Beijing released a, quote, rumor announcement early this morning. It stated, quote, recently the news about the outbreak of 301 hospital and the list of more than 100 closed communities in Haidan district has spread on the internet, which has aroused the attention of netizens. Check with the relevant department that the above are rumors and hope that the majority of netizens will not listen, believe, or spread it. And Epoch Times has an exclusive story showing that the Chinese Communist Party has, in fact, been covering up cases at that hospital and at local military compounds. On June 23rd, a whistleblower at the Beijing military compound using the pseudonym Zhang Bo revealed information about the outbreaks in an interview with the Epoch Times. He said on June 1st, there were three men between the ages of 45 and 50 who were diagnosed at the military compound. The Epoch Times also received a leaked internal document warning about the cases at the 301 hospital. It states that, quote, because of the outbreak in the 301 hospital, many military camps and military restrooms have coronavirus patients and close contacts. Please take extra precautions. Now, we'll be looking into that again as it develops. Moving on, though. Now, so why do netizens not believe the Chinese Communist Party's narratives? Why is it that when the Chinese Communist Party releases a statement saying everything's okay, stop spreading rumors, that it has the opposite result with Chinese netizens? Because over time, they've understood that when the CCP says something isn't happening, when they find it important enough to come out and say, debunk a rumor, it usually means the rumor is true. And this has been a pattern with the Chinese Communist Party, which many Chinese netizens and Chinese citizens overall are familiar with. Many of them say, including dissidents I've spoken to, that if you want to read the truth, read the Chinese news outlets, and believe it's the opposite of what they're saying then you might get an accurate picture of what's taking place in China. And because the Chinese Communist Party has many systems in place to automatically censor keywords, much like, unfortunately, some of the social networks in the U.S. apparently have, they've developed their own language when talking about these things, and the humor can be pretty entertaining. Just some analysis, too, on why the CCP might not be forthcoming with outbreaks at these military compounds. It is trying to protect the integrity of the Chinese military. It's trying to protect the image of the Chinese military when it comes to the virus. We might remember during the bigger outbreaks in China previously, they were saying that many of the military branches had not had cases. And that was, say, going against facts on the ground that many cases were being seen in the military. They've been trying to cover up especially virus outbreaks within their military ranks. Now, moving on to some news between China and Russia, Chinese citizens are being accused now of faking CCP virus tests in order to leave Russia. Now, some news on this. South China Morning Post is reporting. Chinese citizens have faked COVID-19 test reports so they can board flights home from Russia, prompting multiple warnings from Beijing's envoy to Moscow. It says the embassy had issued nearly identical warnings going back to May 29th, but again recently on Sunday, after discovering people had forged negative nucleic acid test results that the government requires passengers to take within five days of flying from Russia to China. And it continues, the embassy said the passengers had caused great harm to the health and safety of the passengers and crews of the flights and undermine China's domestic epidemic pre prevention work. It says the counterfeiters were under investigation and would, quote, bear corresponding legal responsibilities. Now, a bit of background on that. Many Chinese citizens have been trapped in the China-Russia border region, and those not trapped at the border region are still trying to get back to China. 
Many of them are, have become pseudo-displaced citizens in Russia. They cannot go back to China, and Russia had, does not want them there anymore. Russia had even stripped the citizenship of many Chinese living in Russia. And now the funny thing about these tensions between China and Russia is that normally when things like this happen between China and other countries, you have increased tensions. We're not seeing that with China and Russia. Instead, the Chinese Communist Party is defending the Russian decision. Now imagine if the United States stripped citizenship of Chinese nationals and sent them back to China or sent them to the border regions of China and China wouldn't let them back in. Right? What would happen? CCP would say, oh, you're being racist. This is an attack of the United States on China. They're not saying that when it comes to Russia. And why is that? And rather than criticize Russia for this decision, it has been criticizing the Chinese nationals trapped on the border region and unable to enter either country. It's criticizing its own citizens and telling them they should stay in place and be responsible to their countries and deal with the virus as they see fit where they're at. And this, of course, shows the two-faced nature of Chinese Communist Party policy. Again, the issue is not protecting the citizens. The issue is protecting the interests of the Chinese Communist Party. Now, moving on to some updates from the United States. We have here an article from the Epoch Times that says, Least restrictive states have lower CCP virus death rates. Most closed states have highest. And it continues, a lower death rate on average for the least restrictive states appears to be live predictions that some officials have encouraged their states to relax restrictions too quickly. Now, this information could give some additional, say, grounding to some of the articles we saw coming out earlier. You might remember New York Times other media saying the virus outbreak appeared to be worse in Democrat areas than in Republican areas, not just major cities, but other areas as well. And even New York Times in its own analysis couldn't really give a clear picture on why that was. Now, according to this study, it may be because of the different takes on how to deal with the virus. Largely, a lot of the Republicans say standards of dealing with this have had less restrictions than the Democrat-held areas. And so if this new study is accurate, it would suggest that for some reason, areas that had fewer lockdowns seem to have dealt better with the virus. The death rate, at least, was lower. Now, it is possible that one of the factors in this, which is not really being mentioned in a lot of areas, is that in big cities such as New York, part of the government policy, say, opened up retirement homes. And so they had, reti they had people with the virus going into these retirement homes from government policy. That government policy led to a lot of the deaths. Now, in addition to this, Global News in Canada is claiming that there's a study saying that the use of masks may have also reduced the death rates. Now, the article cites Christopher Leffler of Virginia Commonwealth University, one of the study's authors. Now, he said, quote, What we found was that of the big variables that you can control, which influence mortality, was wearing masks. And he continues, It wasn't just by a few percent. It was up to a, f it was up to a hundred times less mortality. The countries that introduced masks from the very beginning of the outbreaks have had hardly any deaths. Now, it does seem these articles contradict each other, right? A lot of the areas with less restrictive policies, many of, them did not, many of them did not require face masks. In the U.S., many of the areas that did require face masks had the more restrictive policies. Again, maybe it's a combination of the two. Maybe the face masks did reduce the rates in some areas. Maybe the higher death rates were again caused by these policies, for example, relating to these retirement homes, which did lead to higher deaths. And also, we're seeing different reporting from different countries. Sweden, for example, had very few lockdowns. They kept a lot of businesses open, but they still had very high rates of infection. Also, the local economy in Sweden, interestingly, still took a hit, just actually about the same rate as other countries. They're attributing that to people, say, for example, not going out as much, not buying products as much, and so on. Taiwan, meanwhile, also had very little lockdowns, but it fared pretty well. They didn't have really huge outbreaks or death rates in Taiwan. And also, Taiwan did keep things pretty open during the whole virus outbreak. And so it does seem data on the virus is still kind of all over the place. It's hard to tell what to rely on at this point. Now, in other words, jumping to a story back in China, the Chinese Communist Party wants to demolish people's homes and begin creating centralized combined housing. Now, in Shandong, China, they're pushing for, quote, combining villages together 
Now, according to Chinese media reports, the, quote, cohabitation of villages promoted by Shandong province means merging neighboring rural areas and establishing a new type of rural community to allow farmers to live in buildings. Now, reports are saying some people had their homes destroyed by the Chinese Communist Party, but have still not been given an answer from local authorities on when these new homes are going to be built. And in addition to that, many villagers are saying they have not been given enough compensation to find new homes as well. Now, a few notes on this as well. The Chinese Communist Party is pushing for this cohabitation housing while people are still dealing with lockdowns. And many people are viewing this, them putting people in closer proximity to each other, as being contradictory to a lot of the lockdowns they're putting in place. They're questioning, okay, if you want us practicing social distancing, why are you putting us in larger housing compounds that put us closer, closer together? And they're also criticizing the China, Chinese Communist Party for putting additional pressure on them during times when things are already difficult, both economically and in terms of their living standards because of this virus. And netizens are blaming the Chinese Communist Party for acting like bandits and for robbing people. And the Chinese Communist Party is conducting mass testing for the virus Long lines, lack of social distancing, videos from the ground are showing lines that going so far you can't even see the end of them. And the scenes we're seeing with this mass testing is happening while the Chinese Communist Party has been enforcing lockdowns and tight social controls to prevent close gatherings like this. And so this is being seen again as contradictory to the Chinese Communist Party's policies. If the Chinese Communist Party is trying to tell people that it's, it's dangerous to gather in close proximity, which is why it's closing down factories, which is why it's locking down housing units. But it's okay to go stand back to back, shoulder to shoulder, with thousands of people out on the streets to you know, undergo this mass testing. And meanwhile, the large scale testing also has questionable effectiveness and accuracy. For example, some of the testing they've done in China, the doctors were reusing the same gloves. They were not changing their gloves between patients. People were worried that the, say, activities of the testing itself could be spreading the virus. And in addition to that, some of the testing being done at housing developments and compounds, they're combining the virus testing in the same kits in some cases. Some Chinese netizens are speculating then on whether this is even being done to prevent the virus. Some of them, for example, are even speculating that the Chinese Communist Party is doing this to collect DNA samples for use in its social control programs. Notably, a lot of it's, say, AI-based social monitoring systems pull from DNA and biometrics. And also, a couple updates on these autonomous zones in the U.S. Seattle is saying it will clear out the autonomous zone. And in Washington, D.C. police have cleared out one of these attempts to make an autonomous zone near the White House. Now, a quote from this article from Epoch Times. Police in Washington on Tuesday cleared the streets around the White House after protesters tried to set up an autonomous zone on Monday evening. It says some protesters had set up tents and food distribution areas near H Street and 16th Street, known as Black Lives Matter Plaza near Lafayette Square. Riot police were seen telling protesters to leave while moving in a line. Now that said, folks, again, we'll be covering these issues as they develop, looking at what's happening in China, look at some of the big stories in the United States. We'll be broadcasting the show again Monday through Friday, five days a week, so please tune in. That said, please take care of yourselves, stay healthy, stay safe. We'll see you next time.